Number seven, large destruction and large scale construction. From the 1950s until the end of the 1960s, many young Japanese architects were dreaming up schemes to rebuild the Japanese cities that were destroyed during the war. Seeing the many major infrastructure projects taking place around Japan, like the elevated highways and the rerouting of rivers, they found inspiration in these civil engineering projects and architecturalized them. These architects called themselves metabolists and suggested megastructures in the Tokyo Bay and elsewhere. Not much came out of these dreams apart from a loan structure here and there. But all this visioning helped to elevate some of these architects such as Kenzo Tange and especially Kishu Kurokawa to stars on TV. Kishu Kurokawa got the chance to share his dreams both on TV and in many magazines. Like here in the Playboy magazine where he is portrayed as a visionary dandy. Thus in Japan a whole new generation grew up seeing an additional layer of sexiness to being an architect. Number six, the house is a piece of art. One architect strongly resisted this idea that an architect could have any influence on the chaotic development of a mega city such as Tokyo. This was the mighty Kazuo Shinohara. After the parents have sent off their offspring to university, sharing a dream of fame, there is Shinohara, a recovering mathematician proclaiming in front of his 10 to 20 students that it's hopeless to try to get a grip on the city. It is the individual house, those houses that are worthless in the blink of an eye that these students should pay their attention to. Shinohara's mantra, the house is a piece of art, echoes through the auditorium. Never has a sentence had a stronger influence on architecture as this proclaimment by the mighty Kazuo Shinohara.